Hello friends, this is Nicole from the Loved and Listen To channel and today I'm going to talk to you about three ways that quietly quitting your job will help you to feel happier. So if you're new here, this is the second video, this is the second week that I am doing these how to be happy videos as part of my Mental Health Mondays series. So I will link the playlist down below so you can check out all of the videos. Before today, let's talk about what quietly quitting is, how it can positively affect your mental health make you feel happier, and three practical ways to do it. So I want to start this off with a very short story time. One thing that made me feel called to make this video about work. Um, the other day I was talking to a colleague and she was talking about how she is starting to release a lot of the emotion that she carries about her work. So the demands that are placed on her, a lot of them unfair, a lot of the really ridiculous expectations that she's experiencing at work and how over the years she has really tried very hard to meet those expectations expectations, but in an attempt to meet those expectations, she has become very sad and she got to the realization um, that she was very sad and just ready to do something different, ready to approach work in a different way after one of her close work friends got sick. So her friend went in for a serious surgery. It was not a routine thing. He needed a stent to be placed in his heart. And he, like a lot of Americans, like no regard for, or very little regard for taking time off work. And so when he told everybody in his department that he was going to go have this pretty serious surgery, he also told them that he would be back in a week, <laughs> which is crazy. If you live outside of the States, please know that this kind of like thinking is somewhat prevalent in corporate America at least like in office jobs or whatever we have the very erroneous expectation of like that we need to push our bodies like constantly we need to not take all time from work we need to not take vacation blah 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 and so this man thought the same thing that he was going to go and have this really extensive surgery and that he would actually be back at work like within a week or so. So unfortunately for this man, he ran into several complications during the surgery, had to be placed on like a ventilator and just has had a lot of complications with his surgery to the point where he is still in the hospital and my friend had to make phone calls on his behalf to HR, help his wife fill out paperwork, all, the, all of this stuff. I do wanna share this story in an attempt to kind of illustrate how your mental and emotional commitment to your job can actually be very detrimental. So, also, my friend that told me this story, when she heard about her friend going through this issue of like after his surgery, it really made her reevaluate the amount of energy and emotional commitment, mental commitment, time commitment that she was making to her job. And it really made her understand that her work is not what determines her worth. And therefore, she needed to prioritize not only her mental health, but also her own physical health, her own family. And this is something that I too have come to realize that I make these videos so I can hopefully get these messages out to lots of other people. So you can just at least start to think about how your relationship with your job makes you feel not only mentally and emotionally, but also physically, because all of that is very, very much intertwined. So what does it mean, to get back to the topic of the video, what does it mean to quietly quit? And how is this all related? The idea of quietly quitting is that 
you are still at your job, you're still, you know, doing your job, but you are doing it with a lower level of commitment. So I'm going to take that idea and apply it to your mental health, your physical health, your wellness in general, because that's what we talk about on this channel. So this idea of quietly quitting can be really, really helpful when you are working at a job that you maybe if it doesn't actually it doesn't even matter if you like the job or not. It depends on how much of your energy and your time and your emotional like investment, how much of that are you doing with this job and is doing so affecting you negatively? So that's the question that you have to ask yourself to determine if quietly quitting would be something that would be of interest to you or something that you should consider doing for your own sake. So let's talk about three ways that quietly quitting can actually help you feel better, feel happier, and help your mental health, improve your mental health. So the uh, this is like a bonus one. The obvious benefit of doing this is that if you still need money from your job, which a lot of us do, of course, quietly quitting will allow you to maintain, you know, your job and your source of income and your health insurance, and all of that stuff. Um, because if you actually just pack up your stuff and leave, you obviously will not continue to get paid and you will not um, have your health benefits. So... If you're not at that point, then quietly quitting can be a way to kind of find some middle ground between still doing your job, still, you know, bringing in money, especially in this economy, goodness, um, and also, you know, starting to prioritize yourself. So that's kind of like a freebie. So to piggyback on that, um, one, another benefit of Quitting, quietly quitting your job and how it'll make you feel happier and improve your mental health is just overall, once you start to disconnect your worth and like how you think about yourself with like how much you perform at work, you'll naturally be less involved in any kind of like office politics, office drama, stuff going on between people. And I can personally attest to this. I recently started to take a good look at how me worrying about things going on at work that oftentimes didn't even really involve me, but me worrying about it was making me feel bad, giving me physical ailments like headaches and stuff. And now that I have gotten to the point where I'm putting more space between me and my job, I just naturally don't care. I just, I just naturally am like, well, okay, y'all be crazy if y'all want to. That ain't got nothing to do with me. So if you, especially if you're working in an, in an environment where there is a lot of drama, there is a lot of craziness that you get kind of caught up in, like it, like innocent bystander style, then quietly quitting could be a really, really good option for you. So the next, the next reason why quietly quitting can really help you to feel better is once you take all of that energy you were expending, all of that emotional energy that you were expending and stuff, guess what? If you don't have it over here in this crazy bucket, work, work bucket, now you can put it in your own bucket right here. I wish I could do graphics because I would put a bucket here. Maybe I can put a bucket right here. This is where your energy is going to go now that it's not being allocated to crazy stuff at work and this bucket can be whatever kind of bucket you want it to be it can be your bucket of going to the movies on tuesday which is what i love to do it doesn't matter but you'll have more energy for yourself and that will help you to just feel better and it'll kind of overflow into other parts of your life. I think that a lot of people, myself included, we do not give enough 
um, we don't think enough about how men mentally and emotionally exhausting activities can make us feel physically. It is not a separate thing where like your brain runs on this battery and your body runs on this other battery. No, <laughs> that is not how it works. You are like a whole, a whole juicy piece and you got to take care of all of your juicy piece, you know, and your mental health stuff is a part of your physical health stuff and vice versa. So definitely once you start to quietly quit, and remove yourself from drama and workplace boo-boo, then you will have more energy for yourself. And next, so with that, that energy bucket we were talking about, now that you have some stuff in it, you can pursue other things. So that is the third reason why you would want to consider quietly quitting your job, removing yourself, stop giving yourself, stop giving your job so much energy is because you can take that energy bucket that you now is full and dump it into doing stuff that you want. So very connected to this to the first and second um, ideas, but you will you will be amazed at how much more energy you have to do things that you want to do. So let's now talk about three quick ways that you can start to quietly quit your job today. Number one, this is probably the most important thing, is first you need to accept that you do have power in your situation. Just like the story that I told of my friend at the beginning of the video, it had not occurred to her for years, for over 10 years, that she had the power to not mentally and emotionally involve herself in like all of the extra stuff that goes along with working for a, a company, basically. It had never occurred to her. The thought didn't even enter her mind until she saw her friends suffering and suffering in a pretty extreme way. So sometimes that happens to people. You can learn from what other people are going through or something, God forbid, may happen in your life that makes you reprioritize things. But, or you can watch a video like this and get an idea. So however it comes to you, realize that you do have power in your work situation. Until you get it in your heart and your mind that you have a you have power in this situation. You're not going to do anything else that you might think of or anything else that I might mention. So please stop first and say to yourself right now, you can say it with me. I have power. You have power. Realize that. Remember that and act upon it. The second fast thing that you can do to start to quietly quit your job and to start to feel better and to be happier is to set boundaries. So I have talked about setting boundaries in a couple of my videos. I will link a couple of them down below and you can check those out if you need some more ideas because I go into like more specifics or whatever with like setting boundaries at work specifically. But however you go about doing it, after you have told yourself and start to believe that you have power, in my case, and a lot of people's cases, the desire to set boundaries just naturally comes up. You don't even have to think about it anymore. Once you start disconnecting your worth from your work and start prioritizing yourself, you're going to start to see all of these instances where you can, you can simply say no, you can... Um, ask for more time, you can voice your needs or whatever, but whatever that looks like, the, before you get to asking for what you want, you have to think about your boundaries and set some for yourself and then you'll naturally just start communicating them. It's like magic. It takes, once you get it in your mind that you're worth what you're worth, which you are, 
you are it you deserve to be happy you deserve to be treated like a human being once you get that in your mind all this other stuff it's just gonna be like water it's just gonna flow out of you it's gonna be really great so the last thing that you can do to um to quietly quit your job and just do what you can in order to get along but also keep your job. Um, the third thing that you can do is to just refuse to get caught up. This is related to the second point that I just made, but I'll give you an example. Um, several times, <laughs> I, I kind of have the personality where people like to talk to me and I am very thankful for that. I feel like it's a gift. But sometimes it's a curse because at work especially, sometimes folks will want to like call me and tell me bad stuff about other people or involve me in their situations and stuff. And sometimes I have the energy for it, sometimes I don't. Now, I communicate when those times are. And if it's deeper than that, when where like some people are having an argument, they want me to take a side or something, I now just refuse. I just say something like, well, you know, you guys are adults. I feel like you know more about the situation than I do. So I'm gonna let you guys work it out. You can say it in a nice professional way like I just did, or just ignore the phone call, don't don't go to lunch with them anymore, whatever you need to do. But just refuse to get caught up. And putting up that initial boundary where you're saying like, oh, I'm not even going to participate in this. It allows you to not have to figure out what to do later. And I just I, I just thought about that. Like if you just refuse to not even like if it's a, a house of mess. Somebody and you say instead of going into the house of mess and looking for the broom and looking for the mop and the and the towels and stuff to clean up. If you instead just say, I'm not going into the house, that's not my house. That's not my house is messy. No, thank you. I'm gonna just walk down the street. If you do that instead, that saves you so much time and energy. And you will not be caught up in whatever mess is going on at work. And you can also use this advice in your personal life. Just don't get involved. Don't get caught up. Yes. So if you do a combination of those three things, I guarantee you, it's not a money back guarantee because y'all are not paying me any money yet, but I do guarantee you that you will feel better. You will feel happier. You will have more energy for yourself and your own stuff. And that's going to be awesome because you deserve it. There you go. That's all right now. Okay. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I am excited about the week now because I cannot wait to tell somebody, this is not my mess. This is not my messy house. I'm not going in there. And I hope that you too will tell somebody that this week, I hope that you will set a boundary this week. I hope that you will excuse yourself from any kind of foolishness this week. And I hope most of all that you accept that you do have power in situations. So get out there, start to quietly quit, still do your job, do a good job or whatever, but not to the point where it is negative for your mental health or your own physical wellness. You're your best advocate. Sometimes you're your only advocate. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video or if you noticed my tag here throughout the video, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below what's a way that you like to set a boundary at work especially, but however you, know, you wanna reply, just let me know down in the comments below. I will see you in the next video, and until then, namaste.